In this video, I want to expand on the crypto arbitrage indicator code to make a combined volume indicator. So if you haven't watched my previous video where I built out a uh, crypto arbitrage indicator using the new dynamic request security function in version six of PineScript, go and watch that first. So the script you see on my chart is displaying the combined volume across all of these crypto exchanges. It works for Forex as well and for stock markets. And this override exchanges setting allows you to specify your own uh, exchanges and that will override these lists so that you can provide your own um, exchanges for other markets that aren't included by default. This little debug mode will just create a label down in the corner which tells you the exchange ticker and the market type. So Bitcoin is obviously going to be crypto um, and the exchange ticker is not as obvious as it might sound like on Coinbase, Bitstamp, etc. It is uh, what it looks like. But if we come down to uh, crypto.com, for example, and click on that, the ticker is actually crypto.com. There's no full stop there. And if we go to a Forex market like Euro dollar on FXCM, the ticker is not FXCM. It's just FX. So that's not intuitive. So that's why I included the debug setting there. Um, as always, the source code for this will be on my website. There'll be a link at the end of this video and let's go over it. So as you can see here, if I go back to Bitcoin US dollar on Coinbase and we zoom in this big red candle here, that tagged 100 K for Bitcoin, which is crazy watching history in the making. I watched that happen yesterday. Uh, very cool stuff. Let's have a look at the volume bar here. This gray line that you see on these volume bars is Coinbase's volume. The larger uh, volume bar is the broad market volume. So that is combining the volume from all of these tickets, uh, Bitstamp, Binance, Bitfinex, Kraken, um, all the way down to smaller exchanges like Gate.io and uh, KuCoin. So it's accumulating the volume for all the major TradingView listed exchanges and drawing that here. And we're also getting the relative volume of the current market compared to the broad market volume. That allows us to sort of see when, um, you know, if we get a volume bar, especially on a lower time frame, let's go down to a one hour bar, there will be times when there's a large dump or purchase on Coinbase uh, by a whale that is not reflected in the broad market. And this indicator just gives you a good idea of is this volume uh, sustained across the entire market or is it just local to this exchange? So how did I write this script? Let's open up the Pine editor and have a look. The main difference with this script compared to the arbitrage indicator is that because we're using multiple different lists, where we've got crypto, forex, stocks, and other markets. Um, so I have four different arrays here. I actually have a custom function here, which just gets the corresponding array list for the market type. So this is a custom function that returns one of these arrays. The way I'm checking which array to return is using a switch function or switch operator. The switch operator controls which thing we return based on this value on the left. So if symbol info.type is equal to crypto, we return the crypto exchanges. If it's Forex, we re return Forex and so on. If it doesn't match any of these, it will just return a blank array. Because if other exchanges, if the array size of other exchanges is greater than zero, that means we have more than one element in that array, then we are going to return other exchanges. And that allows us, like I showed you earlier, to override um, all of these lists with our own custom list. So if I wanted to only see Binance and Coinbase, I could, I could put those two in. And now I don't think this coin is listed on, on Coinbase, at least not as a tether pair. So all we're seeing here is the uh, Binance volume. That's why these values match. So moving on, we have the exact same for loop from the crypto arbitrage example, except this time we're using our uh, custom function to return the array corresponding to the market type. That allows us to write a single for loop that does the same thing for all the different uh, exchanges based on the market type. And I don't have to copy and paste this for loop four times to cycle through all four arrays. Just keeps the code a bit tidier there. So we've added a little bit of complexity to the script for the sake of optimizing the code to only require a single for loop. And then finally, we plot the volume of the current bar with a 50% gray um, and then on top of this volume, so the plots are plotted in order 
of their listing in the code. So this gets plotted first, a gray bar for the current market's volume, and then the combined volume is plotted second over the top of that gray bar. And so if I clear out this override uh, list, you can see that that gives us the effect of this sort of lighter color. And then the total market volume is a darker color overlaid over that um, current market volume. And then we have our little debug table, which just displays the symbol prefix, which is our exchange. In, that case, in this case, that would be Binance and then the market type. So yeah, just a really simple use case of the new dynamic security function, building out a indicator, which doesn't require hard coding all of these request function calls. We can just do it straight in a for loop. Hope you found this interesting. The source code to the script will be on your chart right now. Go to that link or click the little eye icon up in the top right. With that said, good luck with your trading and I'll speak with you in the next video. Goodbye.